This video is part 11 in a series about Super Nintendo Entertainment System features. As the last chapter of the first unit, this video will be more of a reference than an explanation of anything. Most of what is described here can be found in more detail in the earlier videos. Here, I'll list off every hardware register in memory pages hex 21, 40, 42, and 43, and very briefly explain their purposes. Each register will have a small note showing which video in the series you can go to to find more information about that particular feature. All of the hardware registers can be categorized into a few groups. Page number hex 21 has all of the PPU registers, those controlling the behaviors of objects and OAM access, backgrounds and VRAM access, palettes and CG RAM access, windows, main and subscreen color math, mode 7 parameters, and other technical info regarding drawing the game image to the television screen. It also includes the APU input-output ports, as well as an indirect way to access work RAM. Page hex 40 has the legacy controller input and output ports. Page hex 42 has main CPU hardware registers, including those associated with the updated controller interface and auto joypad read control, interrupts and timings, and multiplication and division registers. And finally, page hex 43 holds all of the direct memory access and HDMA registers. PPU register hex 2101 holds three parameters regarding objects. The highest three bits control the sizes of the smaller and larger objects. Only the first six options here were intended to be used. The last two have rectangular shaped objects that are undefined and behave oddly with vertical flipping. The other five bits are used to specify where in VRAM the object character data should be located. Object character data uses two pages of eight kilobytes each. Page zero is specified by the lower two bits and can be located at VRAM word addresses hex zero, 2000, 4000, or 6000. Bit 2 of this address was intended to be used as an expansion bit in case the size of VRAM was ever doubled, but that was never implemented, so this bit goes unused. Page 1 is specified by the middle two bits and can be located either hex 1000, 2000, 3000, or 4000 words after page 0. These VRAM addresses do wrap around at hex 8000 since VRAM only holds 64 kilobytes. PPU registers hex 2102 and 2103 are used to change the object priority rotation. Set the highest bit of hex 2103 to 1, and write the index of the object to have the highest priority, hex 0 through 7f, to address hex 2102. Objects become lower priority as their object index increases. These two registers are also used for OAM access. The lower 8 bits of an OAM address are written to hex 2102, and the upper 1 bit is written to hex 2103. Then, writing to PPU register hex 2104 in the order of lower 8 bits, upper 8 bits, will write that 16-bit word to the address specified in addresses 2102 and 2103. PPU register hex 2138 can be used to read from OAM in the order of lower 8 bits and upper 8 bits as well. After addresses hex 2104 or 2138 are written to or read from for a second time, the address in hex 2102 and 2103 is automatically incremented. This way, many values can be written to or read from at a time without having to write the OAM address every time. This also makes these registers ideal for use with direct memory access to write lots of data to OAM very quickly. CG RAM can also be accessed in this way by using PPU register hex 2121 to write an 8-bit CG RAM word address and using PPU registers hex 2122 and 213B to write to or read from respectively. CG RAM addresses range from hex 0 to FF, so only one address register is needed here. The two data registers are still write twice and read twice in the order of lower 8 bits and upper 7 bits. The address register is automatically incremented upon writing or reading a word of data like before. Work RAM can also be accessed in this way by using PPU registers hex 2181 through 2183 to write a 17-bit work RAM address 
and using PPU register hex 2180 to read or write data. In this case, the same register is used to read and write data, and that data is only 8 bits wide. These registers are also automatically incremented like the others. VRAM can also be accessed in this way by using PPU registers hex 2116 and 2117 to write a 15-bit VRAM word address. PPU registers hex 2118 and 2119 are used to write 16-bit word data to VRAM, while registers hex 2139 and 2130A can be used to read 16-bit word data. The usage of video RAM is a bit more free and lenient, which is why two registers, which are both write or read once, are used, instead of a single write or read twice register. The address registers are incremented after writing or reading data automatically, but VRAM has a few more options associated with it. PPU register hex 2115 holds a few parameters regarding exactly how these address registers are incremented when writing or reading VRAM data. The highest bit controls whether the address increments after the high byte of the word or the low byte of the word has been written or read. This makes it possible to write or read only the high or low bytes in VRAM. This is particularly useful for Mode 7 tile maps and can allow for tile map data to be uninterleaved before being uploaded to VRAM, which can compress better. The lowest two bits change how much the address increments by each time data is written or read. This parameter is useful when uploading tile maps to VRAM. Incrementing one by one is useful for updating tiles in a horizontal manner since that is the order they are stored in memory. Incrementing in steps of 32 is useful for updating tiles in a vertical manner when using background modes 0 through 6, since each row of a background page consists of 32 characters. And incrementing in steps of 128 is useful for updating tiles in a vertical manner when using background mode 7, since each row has 128 characters there. These last two bits can be useful when uploading graphics data to VRAM. When these bits are set to anything other than zero, the 15 bits corresponding to the VRAM address are shuffled around to create a new remapped address. Essentially, this allows large blocks of graphics to be processed one pixel row at a time instead of one 8x8 tile at a time, which can allow for better compression. Option 01 allows writing rows of 256 pixels, or 32 tiles, of 2 BPP data, 128 pixels, or 16 tiles, of 4 BPP data, or 64 pixels, 8 tiles, of 8 BPP data at a time. Option 10 doubles those values, and option 11 quadruples them. Just like how the location of object data within VRAM needs to be specified, background data needs to be located as well both where the tile map is located and where the characters are. PPU registers hex 2107 through 210A are used to locate the tile map for background layers 1 through 4 respectively, while using background modes 0 through 6. The highest 6 bits are used for this purpose. The resolution of the location of the tile maps is every hex 400 words in VRAM. Just like before, the highest bit actually ends up unused because VRAM is only 64 kilobytes and 6 bits is enough to map to twice of that. The lower two bits of each of these registers designates the size of the background, whether it uses just one 32 by 32 character tile page, two pages horizontally, two pages vertically, or four pages in a square. PPU registers hex 210B and 210C are used to locate the character tile data for each background, the graphics data that makes up the tiles used for each background layer. Each field is 4 bits wide, which means the resolution of the location of the character data is every hex 1000 words in VRAM. And again, the pages can wrap around from the end of VRAM at hex 8000, and the last bit is unused because VRAM was never expanded to 128 kilobytes. PPU register hex 2105 holds three background parameters. The bottom three bits control which background mode is currently active. Bit 3 is the high priority toggle for background layer 3 in background modes 0 and 1. And the last four bits denote whether the characters that make up each of the four backgrounds are small or large. Small characters are 8x8 dots in background modes 0 through 4, 
and our 16 by 8 dots in modes 5 and 6. Though they still show up as square unless interlace mode is on because those are the high resolution background modes. Large characters are always 16 by 16 dots and show up square on all modes as long as interlace mode is enabled on modes 5 and 6, otherwise they look vertically stretched. Large characters get their additional tile IDs by adding hex 1 to get a tile to the right, adding hex 10 to get a tile below, and adding hex 11 to get a tile below and to the right. These indices are limited to 10 bits, so we'll wrap around at hex 400. Characters are always 8x8 eight eight in background mode 7. PP registers hex 210D through 2114 are the general horizontal and vertical background scroll registers. These are all write twice registers in the order of lower 8 bits and upper 2 or 5 bits, since the maximum scroll value is more than 8 bits. 10 bits for large backgrounds in mode 0 through 6, and 13 bits for a mode 7 background. The four background mode 7 matrix parameters can be found in PPU registers hex 211B through 211E. Each of these are 16-bit write twice registers in the order of lower 8 bits and upper 8 bits. The values here are in 8.8 .8 fixed point binary, so a value of hex 100 corresponds to the decimal value of 1.0. When not being used for mode 7 calculations, a 16-bit value can be written to hex 211b, and an 8-bit value can be written once to hex 211c to multiply the two values together. The 24-bit result can be read from PPU registers hex 2134 through 2136, with no weighting required, since this process makes use of the mode 7 multiplication hardware. PPU registers hex 211F and 2120 are the 13-bit mode 7 matrix transformation center coordinates. These values are in a 5.8 fixed point binary, so a value of hex 100 corresponds to 1.0 like the matrix parameters. And PPU register hex 211A holds a couple more mode 7 parameters. The lower two bits control the horizontal and vertical flipping of the screen, the upper two bits specify what is rendered outside of the mode 7 background in case the edges show up on the screen. PPU registers hex 2126 through 2129 control the left and right positions of the two windows. Registers hex 2123 through 2125 hold a lot of parameters, including the enable switches and in and out flags for each window for each background layer, objects, and the color window and registers hex 212A and 212B specify the Boolean logic for when the two windows intersect for each background layer, objects, and the color window. The parity switch for each window shown previously acts as the Boolean not operation in this context. The SNES's mosaic effect can be enabled on the four background layers independently by using the lower four bits of PPU register hex 2106. The upper four bits control the size of the mosaic grid. PPU registers hex 2122C and 2122D enable each of the background layers and the object layer on the main and subscreen, while registers hex 2122E and 2122F enable windowing on those layers. Register hex 2130 holds switches for the color window on the main and subscreens, the switch for whether color math is done with the main and subscreen or with the main and fixed color, as well as the direct color switch. Register hex 2131 holds all of the switches for which background layers, object layer, and background color are involved in color math. It also contains the addition or subtraction switch, as well as the half enable flag, which allows for color averaging. PPU register hex 2132 is where the fixed color can be determined. It's a little odd in that you don't write the color data directly, but instead specify each color component at a time. The upper three bits are used to denote which color component is currently being written via the lower five bits. The highest bit in PPU register hex 2100 can be used to toggle forced blank, which turns the electron beam in the television off completely. The lower four bits control the intensity of the beam, 
which in turn controls the brightness of the image. PPU Register Hex 2133 holds a bunch of various options. The upper two bits were to be used with external images fed into the SNES, say via the expansion port. They never got a use in any commercial game. The lowest bit can enable interlace mode. The next lowest bit toggles the object vertical mode. It is meant to be used along with interlace mode to make sure objects scale properly with the increased resolution in the vertical direction. Bit 2 in this register toggles overscan. When off, the visible image consists of 224 lines. When on, 239 visible lines will be produced. And bit 3 enables pseudo horizontal 512 mode for background modes other than 5 and 6. PPU registers hex 213C and 213D are the horizontal and vertical counters that denote where the scanning beam is currently located while drawing the current image. These registers must be latched, that is, the external latch must be triggered by, say, the SNES SuperScope, or register hex 2137 must be read by the CPU. PPU register hex 213E holds two flags regarding object overflow. The highest bit is set when there are 35 or more 8x8 object tiles on the same scan line. Only 34 can be drawn at a time on a single line. The next highest bit is set when there are 33 or more total objects on the same scan line. Only 32 can be on a single line at once. Bit 5 holds a flag that identifies this PPU as the main or helper processor. Again, this wasn't ever utilized and always reads back as the main processor. The lower four bits hold the version of the PPU1 5C77 chip. The lower four bits of PPU register hex 213F hold the version of the PPU2 5C78 chip. Bit 4 denotes whether this is a PAL or NTSC system. Bit 6 is a flag that shows whether the external latch for the horizontal and vertical counters was triggered. And bit 7 is just a flag that denotes whether the current frame is on an odd or even field. The four APU I.O. ports are found at hardware registers hex 2140 through hex 2143. On to the main CPU registers. The NMI enable switch can be found on the highest bit of CPU register hex 4200. The horizontal and vertical IRQ timer switches can be found on bits 4 and 5. The lowest bit also controls the switch to enable automatic joypad read. The horizontal and vertical IRQ timers can be set by writing 9-bit values to CPU registers hex 4207 through 420A. These mark the horizontal and or vertical beam coordinates where the IRQ interrupt will fire. The lower four bits of CPU register hex 4210 hold the main CPU version number. The highest bit of this register holds the NMI flag, which should be read by the CPU before the NMI routine concludes. The highest bit of CPU register hex 4211 holds the IRQ flag which should also be read before the IRQ routine concludes. CPU register hex 4212 contains the H blank and V blank flags from the PPU at its highest two bits. The lowest bit holds a flag to show if automatic joypad read is currently active. And the lowest bit of CPU register hex 42OD holds the memory speed switch to enable fast ROM access. Registers hex 4016 and 4017 are the legacy controller I.O. lines used for reading input and otherwise interacting with any devices connected to the SNES's control deck. While registers hex 4218 through 421F hold the input data read in by standard joypad read for each of the two data lines from the two controller ports. Registers hex 4201 and 4213 are the write and read ports respectively for the programmable controller I.O. line. The main CPU has multiplication and division registers of its own. Two 8-bit values can be written to registers hex 4202 and 4203 to multiply them together. 
A 16-bit dividend and an 8-bit divisor can be written to registers hex 4204 through 4206 to perform a division operation. Both of these multiplication and division operations require waiting for the result. A multiplication takes 8 cycles, while a division requires 16 cycles to complete. The 16-bit quotient from a division operation can be read from CPU registers hex 4214 and 4215. The 16-bit product from a multiplication operation, as well as the remainder of a division operation, can be read from registers hex 4216 and 4217. Lastly are the direct memory access registers. There are eight DMA channels signified by bits 4 through 6 in the register's addresses. In this video, the X can be replaced with the digits 0 through 7 to access each of these eight channels. Register hex 43XO holds a bunch of parameters regarding the DMA or HDMA transfer. The lower three bits specify how many bytes are written to how many registers. In a standard DMA transfer, this dictates the sequence of the writes, while in an HDMA transfer, this dictates how much data is written per scan line. Bits 3 and 4 are used for a standard DMA transfer only and determine if the CPU address should be incremented, decremented, or neither during the transfer event. Bit 6 is used during an HDMA transfer only and can switch between absolute and indirect addressing transfer modes. And the highest bit is used to determine the direction of the transfer, either from CPU space to PPU space or PPU space to CPU space. Register hex 43x1 holds the lower 8-bit address of the PPU register to transfer to or from. Registers hex 43x2 through 43x4 hold the 24-bit CPU address to transfer data from or to. During a standard DMA transfer, registers hex 43x5 and 43x6 hold the number of bytes to transfer for this event. During an HDMA transfer, Registers hex 43x5 through 43x7 are automatically updated to hold the 24-bit CPU address specified by an HDMA table in indirect mode and don't need to be written manually. CPU registers hex 43x8 and 43x9 hold intermediate values that are derived from the CPU address found in registers hex 43x2 through 43x4. These are automatically incremented or decremented during the DMA or HDMA transfer and don't need to be written manually, though it can be manually hijacked while an HDMA event is processing. The highest byte of the address, the bank, is just directly from address hex 43x4, so an HDMA table will wrap around within a single bank. Register hex 43XA is automatically updated to hold the number of lines the current HDMA block is active for and does not need to be written manually. CPU registers hex 43XB and 43XF point to the same 8-bit register and it is completely unused and can be used for any purpose. Finally, register hex 42OB can be written to to start a standard DMA transfer while register hex 42OC is used to queue up HDMA transfers that will begin at the start of the next frame. Thank you for watching. This concludes this SNES Features series. Two more series are planned regarding cartridge enhancement chips and the SNES audio subsystem.